I need, I still need to clean up this crankcase. And it, one thing that I've definitely heard uh, repeated over and over and over again, and that is if I'm gonna weld this aluminum, I have to clean it so good. I have to get, so th these, this is a cast aluminum case. And one thing I've read up on is, is there's different, very, there's various grades of quality of aluminum cast. So depending on how porous, you know, this material is, it actually could absorb quite a bit of oils and stuff like that, that I need to make sure that I get out before I weld it. Um, and I'm actually going to use a, a spool welder, uh, a spool gun uh, to weld, to weld this piece. I'm just going to basically MIG this shut, this crack shut. And then I also have a crack inside there. You can kind of see the crack on the very end, but I need to figure out a way to weld in there as well. And so I got to get everything super, super clean. So one of the tricks that I've, that I did come across online to try is I'm going to, I'm going to put this in my oven at 250 degrees and I'm for like, I don't know, I have to look at the time, but for maybe like a half hour. And I'm going to see if I can bleed out some of that excess oil uh, that could be, you know, kind of caked in the pores of uh, this cast aluminum. So before I do that, I actually am going to remove the, uh, so I've got a set screw right here. I'll loosen that and I'll pull out the, uh, the clutch assembly. Basically what you've got here is when you pull the clutch, right, there's a little, there's a little paddle inside there. You can see I'm moving it and it basically pushes on that rod that we pulled out, you know, almost very first uh, when we were taking the clutch side apart. So I'm going to remove that. And I basically, with, with the exception of this bearing, I'm just going to have bare aluminum in the oven. Um, we'll see what 250 degrees does to this bearing. Like I don't want oil, you know, oil and grease leaking out of it. Um, but I'll put it in the oven like this so that if it does, it'll just drip right onto the pan uh, that I'll have under it. And as long as I don't have new oils and stuff introduced to the area that I care about, you know, getting perfectly clean, then uh, I'm going to try that uh, recommendation that I read off the WeberNet. Just heat it up and see if we can bleed some of the, the oils out of the pores there. After that, I'm going to use some Scotch-Brite. I'm going to use some acetone, um, and I'm really going to see what I can do to just clean out this crack and force uh, acetone through there and just get rid of all the discoloration. So that's all in preparation for welding. Okay, so I tried the sweat technique. So I put the entire case in the oven for about 45 minutes at 200 degrees. You know, just try, I'm just trying this sweat technique with this cast aluminum um, that I read about online. Basically, if you heat it up, you can if, uh, if there's any kind of absorbed oils and stuff, um, the idea is that it sweats it out and then you can kind of like clean it off. So I will say that I think it actually did a little bit. So I had some, I have some stuff in this, in this cavity that, um, it turned white for some reason, you know, and it was, it was kind of like a different residue. Like there's this cavity, you know, doesn't really have a purpose other than I think this is just more structural than anything. So I don't need to like clean out that cavity, but I can tell that it actually changed the surface in there. And I think I can see, kind of more of the impurities that I need to clean off. But in terms of kind of the actual area that I need to weld that I actually care about cleaning, uh, I base, I used a Brillo pad and that actually cleaned kind of the majority um, of everything. Now, one thing that I did discover, I'm actually, let me turn on the uh, flashlight. Okay, so you see that crack? Now you got a really good, you got a better view of it. So you can see I've got some more stuff to clean up in there and I'm gonna have to figure out a way to get in there and weld this shut because I'll tell you what I discovered and I think, I actually wasn't sure if you'd be able to see it, but if you look carefully in this bolt hole, come on, focus. You can barely see the crack in there, right dead center. That is where all the oil was leaking out of. That's why, if you take a close look there, that's why on my the case of my motorcycle, that's why this is such a huge mess with all of this sticky, oily crap all over the place. That's where it was all coming out of. A two-stroke, you know, is kind of a more oily, smoky type, you know, engine that you run, but it shouldn't do this. But now I know where that came from. And now 
I know how important it is. Like absolutely without question, I have to make sure that I weld that shut. Um, so uh, I'm gonna get the spool gun out and I usually have about a three quarter run out on that. I'm hoping that that gets in there deep enough and we can kind of fuse that shut. Um, but I guess there's only one way to find out. The crack is, the, what actually is in the bolt hole is actually a very small kind of sliver. So, okay. I got to pro solve this problem before I can put this, uh, uh, this bottom half of the engine back together. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, try to stitch this crack up. And remember, I've got a crack on this side and then I'm gonna have to use some, you know, probably at least three quarter inch stick out to weld down that crack. And then you see this one right here. So I'm gonna have to weld down in that crack as well. So I'm hoping that I've got, I've got uh, wire speed up to, I'm gonna be uh, on the setting of five. So I'm saying this is about 3 16 of an inch thick. Uh, I'm on aluminum, spool gun, DC electrode positive. I'm using 035 wire. So I'm gonna do wire speed at 590, voltage at 22, inductance somewhere between five and 10. We'll just see how that goes. So what I'm gonna do up here is I'm actually gonna experiment uh, on this one up here and I'm gonna see how good that, uh, that weld will lay down and see if I need to increase or decrease the heat. Now, uh, one of the things, you know, that we read about is it's probably better to heat the aluminum first. Um, so I'm gonna actually gonna heat it up just a little bit. Uh, I do have nap gas. Uh, I feel like that would get it just a little bit too hot. So I'm gonna use propane instead. Um, I don't feel like we need, you know, it doesn't need to get super hot. It's just, uh, we're trying to just avoid shocking the, the metal into, you know, warping or something like that. So, okay. Um, so what I'm using now is I've got the titanium 200 spool gun. I'm using some ER4043, which is labeled really good for, uh, cast aluminum alloys, which is what this is. It's a pretty, from what I've read, it's a pretty universal, uh, you know, it, it's pretty, it's a pretty universal type for what I'm trying to do, but this one specifically mentioned uh, cast aluminum and cast uh, alloys. So um, we're gonna, we're gonna go with that one. Okay, so I've got, uh, I've got it set up for DC electrode uh, positive. So my, uh, my ground is coming off of the negative and uh, the electrode positive. So I've, sw I've got this switched up to uh, spool gun. And then I'm gonna have the gas flowing when I pull the trigger somewhere between about 10 and 15. So when I pull that trigger, it's gonna drop just a little bit, somewhere around 15. That's about what I met, what I MIG weld with uh, on steel and we'll just, we'll just see how it works. Okay, let's weld it. Okay, so uh, let's warm it up a little bit. Again, I'm not trying to warm up any particular area. I just kind of want to warm up the whole thing. I tried to clean this as best I could. I've sanded it. You know, I've used, the, I've scrubbed it with acetone. So the areas where specifically I'm going to be welding, uh, I've cleaned up as, uh, as best I can. It's kind of some tight corners to get in there. I also took my Dremel and I just kind of dug in that crack a little bit. Just to kind of create a little bit of a groove. So I've got a lot of impurities still left in there. There's a lot of impurities. I don't like how that. I don't like how that didn't lay down very good. Okay. So I had a lot of burnout. Uh, there's a lot of impurities left in this, and as I kind of expected there to be. Like cleaning out this crack is super hard to do. So I don't really like how that puddle didn't really lay down. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to reduce the stick out. And. Uh, I've also increased the voltage just a little bit. So I've got my wire feed up super high. Uh, what's my wire feed at? I'm sitting at about 590. So let's just do this next stitch and just see how it goes.
Yeah, I do not like that. Okay, so I didn't really like, I didn't like the first couple attacks that I did. Um, the last two that I did were actually better, but I actually kind of had to turn the voltage down. So right now I'm sitting at about wire speed at 450, voltage is uh, at 20. So turning it down actually was prop, I probably should have started there. So now I kind of got all this piled up. I'm gonna grind this down again and we're gonna try it again and, and just make sure that that's dialed in and that's how I want it. So before I attack these insides, um, we'll make this look good, so. All right, guys, it's uh, it's welding aluminum for the first time as a DIYer. This is this is how we do it. This is the process. Okay, so I got the weld ground down. I got it all kind of cleaned up, but you know I've really kind of removed all the integrity of the weld. So I actually do want to see if I can pile on and just another bead on top of it. Now that I feel like I've got my settings dialed in just a little bit better. So I'm just gonna lay down a couple of more beads along here. I'm gonna see if I can get it to lay down a little bit better uh, with these settings. Yeah, there's just a lot of soot. There's a lot of crap in that, in this cast metal. You know, and there's been oil sitting in here for who knows how many decades. I mean, I'm sure it's soaked in. I mean, I, I cleaned it as best I could. Now see, it's not, it's still not laying down a little bit or better. So I actually might be able to turn the, turn the voltage up just slightly. All right, so this is kind of where I'm at right now. I'm just gonna grind off some of that spatter a little bit. Again, I mean, the weld actually was fairly dirty, uh, even even despite my best efforts to clean it. I really just think that this cast material uh, soaked up a lot of, you know, uh, you know, contaminants over the years. So I don't think, no matter how much I, I sanded it, um, and, you know, no matter how much acetone I use, you know, to prepare the surface, down in that crack and, and embedded in the, the material, I think, it's just pretty dirty. So I did get a lot of soot, you know, uh, burn marks. So ultimately I ended up just filling up that cavity. And I feel like uh, when I start, when I lap these ca uh, crankcases together, it's gonna be a little bit more work now, but um, I feel like we're gonna have good structure. All right, so, I mean, final impressions. Um, this is definitely gonna work. Uh, I feel like this thing is very much structurally sound. Um, I'm going to have a lot of work to do to lap these two, you know, ha crank, uh, halves together, but I did make sure to pile the weld j uh, just higher than, you know, the, the surface of the, the mating surface. So, um, I'm going to get some sandpaper and we'll just kind of, and, and a piece of glass or something. We'll just wet sand these down, uh, back to perfection. But, uh, I, I feel like this should fix the oil leak. Um, I got enough weld in there to, to, to fix it. Um, I do feel like on this crack that was on this side, I got enough down on both sides to make it structurally sound again. My biggest concern here, guys, is just that it's leaking oil. And so as long as it doesn't leak oil, this is uh, gonna be a mission success. This has not been a how-to video, guys. This has just been a, hey, this is how a DIY, a DIYer approaches something that has never been done before. I've researched it as, as best I can. I try to take you know, the, the right steps according to, you know, experts that I, other YouTubers that I found, etc. cetera. Uh, and this is the result. It's not perfect. I'm going to get better at it. I'll look for op other opportunities to weld on this cast aluminum so that I can get better. But uh, I just wanted to share my experience with you uh, with this repair. Um, I'm going to, you know, tell you it's not the most beautiful, but it, it will work.